I googled the word, now I googled messages on destiny, sermons on destiny. And I found there are a lot of sermons out there on destiny. There's your destiny is calling. Run after your destiny. Discovering your destiny. Time to break loose and step into your destiny. And when I read that, I thought about the number of people that hear that and they begin to think, oh, I'm like the children of Israel. You know, it wasn't God's destiny for the children of Israel to be in Egyptian bondage for 400 years. And we think that, oh, the destiny is we're going to have the promise that was given to Abraham because we're Abraham's seed. Or we think about, I'm Esther. I'm going before the king. I'm going to save everybody. Or Gideon who had got a victory with just a few hundred men. But you know, one of my, as I went through, the one that really stood out the most to me is your date with destiny. Now, destiny is defined as a series of events or circumstances that can happen to an individual either now or in the future. These events are often described as unchangeable, and it is deemed that the individual has no control over them. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we just praise you. We thank you, God, again for allowing us one more opportunity to be in your house, to be in your presence, to partake of your word. God, I just ask us to hear, help us, Lord, to be able to hear what you would have to say unto us this morning. And God, we give you all the praise and all the glory. In your holy name, amen. Now, I want to say again, destiny is these events are often described as unchangeable, and it is deemed that the individual has no control over them. Meaning, it's nothing that we and ourselves can do. And this morning, I want to pose the question to those of you that are in the room, those of you who are watching us online, what is your destiny? What is your destiny? I'm going to let that sink in for just a minute. Let you ponder on it. And then I'm going to give you some scripture. Keep in mind that destiny is unchangeable. And we have no control over it. If you can turn with me to Hebrews 9. Hebrews 9 verse 27 says, And it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. Now this scripture right here tells us this is every man's destiny. That it is appointed unto us once to die, and then after we die, there's a judgment. This is the destiny of those who are righteous because we have placed our faith in the shed blood of Jesus Christ, and of those that are unrighteous, those that refuse to accept the sacrifice that was paid on Calvary. But our destiny is, regardless of what we believe or what we don't believe, our destiny is we will die and we will be judged. As I went through, I thought about, we used to have a saint in our church. We went to a Pentecostal church. And they used to have the old-time testimony service where folks popped up and they gave their testimony. And we had this one sister at the end of every testimony that she gave. She always said, I want to see the Lord as my Savior and not as my destroyer. 
But when we look at the fact that we are going to die and that we will be judged, it's a matter of once we die, what will our judgment be? And it's because of that judgment, Jesus came down. It's because of the judgment that man faced, he was willing to sacrifice his life. He was willing to die on the cross. He was willing to take that judgment upon himself so that we don't have to take it upon ourselves. Because the truth of the matter is, we can't handle it. It's like, we can't handle the truth. We can't handle God's judgment. We can't handle God's wrath. We in ourselves, and when I say we, I'm talking mankind, all of us, all of mankind, we cannot handle the judgment of God. So it behooves us to allow ourselves to place our faith in the blood of Jesus Christ, to place our faith in the sacrifice that he paid on Calvary for us. Before the fall of man, Adam was destined to live forever. When God created Adam, he didn't create him to die. The only reason why death has entered into this world is because of sin. And it's because of that sin that we suffer through sickness and disease and afflictions and infirmities. All of it comes because we are going to die. Man's life and works on earth end with death. So it doesn't matter what we do. It doesn't matter how we do it. It doesn't matter how long we do it, how short we do it. The bottom line is it will end in death. Everything that we do will end in death. And it's a matter of whether or not that death is today, that death is tomorrow, next week, next month, next year, five years, ten years. It will end in death. And we have to realize that every opportunity that we have is on this side of death. It's not on the other side. We have to make up in our mind right here, right now, the decision has to be made. Do I want to place my faith in Jesus? Do I want to look to Calvary? Do I want to put my sin at the foot of the cross? Or do I want to try and take it over with me? 1 Timothy 5 and 24, it says, Some men's sins are open beforehand going before to judgment, and some men, they follow after. Meaning, we can either take our sin now and put them on this side while we're living, while we have an opportunity to repent, while we have an opportunity to allow Jesus to cover us. We can do it on this side, or we can wait until we get to the other side. And the thing is, when we get to the other side, if we have not repented for our sins down here on this side of glory, our sins are coming in behind us. You know, and I thought about that. And I thought about, I don't want to be walking into heaven. And then I got all this mess coming in behind me. Because sometimes we as man, we tend to think that we can get by. We can get away. Nothing's going to catch up with us. But the bottom line is, it'll catch up with us. Everything will catch up with us. I don't want to try and conceal my sin on this side because you didn't see that I did that, so you don't know. I can sweep it under the rug, put it behind me, I look around, oh, nobody's here, so let me go over and do this. Nobody's going to see me, so I, I can do this other bad thing. But once I get into glory, 
everything will be brought to the light. Every sin will be uncovered. There will be no, ooh, I thought I got by. Jesus' eyes are everywhere, beholding the good and the evil. So no matter what we think on this side, we need to get it in our mind. There is a judgment coming. And just like in anything else in life that we prepare for, I was thinking about if I was going on a trip and it was a one-way trip, I would prepare myself for not coming back to the spot. Meaning, I would take everything that I was going to need, the things that were important to me, clean up, because I am not coming back to this spot. When we die, we are not coming back to this spot. So we had better have taken care of everything that needs to be taken care of before we get on that journey, before we go down that road. Because we can't get to glory and decide, oops, can I have a do-over? Or, you know, there's a saying, if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. We don't have that option. If we don't succeed, if we do not accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, if we do not accept the sacrifice that he paid, there is no do-over. There is no try and try and try again. This is the one shot that we have in order to get past the judgment of God. And what I find ironic is it's nothing that we can do in ourselves except place our faith in the sacrifice that was paid. Man's sins will be judged in Jesus Christ by us accepting Christ and what he did for us at the cross, or his sins will be judged by Christ at the great white throne judgment. Those are our two options. Accept Jesus, accept the sacrifice, or get to the great white throne of judgment and be judged there. The choice is ours. The choice is ours. When we die, it's a final thing. Final. Stamped. Death. That's it. There's no more to it. No do-over, as I said earlier. It's final. We don't get a second chance at it. This is the only opportunity that we have. While we draw this breath, we need to choose Jesus. Choose life. Ecclesiastics 11 and 3 says, If the clouds be full of rain, they empty themselves upon the earth. And if the tree fall forward, if the tree fall toward the south, or toward the north, in the place where the tree falleth, there it shall be. Meaning, where the tree falls, that's where it lays. If the tree falls to the left, it doesn't, once it's been cut down, it doesn't get up and go, oh, I'd rather fall to the right. When it's cut down, wherever it lands, it's where it's at. When we are cut down, when our life has ended, wherever we fall is where we remain. If we fall under the blood of Jesus, thank you, Lord, we will remain under the blood of Jesus. But if we fall and we're not covered by the blood, that's where we remain. Thank you, Lord. And you know, death isn't something that just happens. Death is an appointment. 
God has given us an appointment by birth, and he gives us an appointment by death. And we can no more run away from death than we can running away from our own selves. Can you imagine? You take off running going, I'm getting away from myself. Well, it's yourself that is going along with you. As we go through this life, we can't run away from death. Death goes along with us. From the day that we take our first breath outside of our mother's womb, we are dying. And as I said, death isn't something that just happens, but it's an appointment. It's a divine decree. You go, what do you mean a divine decree? Genesis 3.19, God told Adam when he had sinned, he said, in the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread till thou return unto the ground. For out of it was thou taken, for the dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. That's a divine decree from the Lord Almighty, from our Father. Once man had sinned, and you know, the thing is, there was Adam. And like I said, God created Adam to live forever. But because of the fall, because of the sin nature, we got a divine decree of death. We have our Father telling us, okay, I formed you out of the dust. I'm going to send you back to the dust. There's no way of getting around it. And you know, man, we, we think we're really smart. We try and find ways to prolong our life. We try and stretch it out the most that we can. It doesn't matter that I'm lying up in a bed on a machine or in the, I still want to live. Come on now. It's not an option that we have that we beat death. And let me just throw this out here as a quick note. I'm not talking Enoch and Elijah, so don't go there with me, okay? That's a whole other message in itself. But the bottom line is man will die. We will all die. And we die because... There has been a divine decree that death is part of our life. Death occurs to all. There's no exception in favor of youth, beauty, blood, rank, station. There's no exemption. You can't merit yourself above it. There's no virtue, no patriotism, no talent. Nothing can purchase us from death. But it's one thing we as believers have that if we are a believer, we can rejoice in the assurance that the gospel has told us there is an eternal life full of joy, peace, happiness. Unlike unbelievers, there is an assurance of eternal life. Grief, sorrow, gnashing, pain. I'm going to ask again. What's your destiny? How do you want to spend your eternal life? There's going to come a time when there's going to be a separation. You know, we think there's a separation now, and we should be separate because we should come out from amongst them and be separate. But I'm talking about that final separation. Jesus told his disciples that the time was going to come when there was going to be a gathering. And the sheep were going to be on his right-hand side, and the goats were going to be on the left-hand side. And our destiny is, are we a sheep or are we a goat? 
are we a sheep that's going to go into eternal life with him? Are we a goat that's going to be tossed into hell? And you know, we talk about hell all the time. And folks say, well, I don't want to go to hell. Or when I get to hell, I'm going to be having a big party. Well, hell is not the end. Just like death is not the end. Death really is the beginning. Because eternity is so much longer than whatever period of time we have had on this earth even from Adam. Eternity will go on. So death is not an end point. Death is a beginning point. A beginning of us spending our lives with Jesus. But there is going to come a separation. And either you're going to be on the right and you're going to be a sheep, or you're going to be on the left and he's going to say, depart from me, Ye cursed into everlasting fire. And this is what I was getting at when I was talking about hell. See, hell is not the end point either. Because hell is going to be cast into the lake that burneth with fire. So you think hell is hot. Wait until you get into the fire. It's a choice that we have, saints. There's going to come a time when every knee is going to bow. Every tongue is going to confess. It doesn't matter if you were Caesar, if you're Alexander the Great, if you're Elon Musk, Bill Gates, or whoever else these billionaires are that we have right now. really doesn't matter. At some point in time, every knee will bow. Do you want to bow it now? Do you want to confess him now? Do you want to allow that to be used in determining the end point of your destiny? Because you can either do it now or you can do it later. You know, just like with anything else, well, let me put it this way, in my life, if you try and force me to do something, I just dig in. But when I can do it on my own, I do it joyfully. Nobody forces me to praise God. Nobody forces me to serve God. Nobody forces me to take his word out to a dead and dying world. It's something that I do because I enjoy it. And you know, in, in talking about spending eternity in heaven with Jesus or in hell, the thing is, it really doesn't matter what I do down here because I don't earn my way into heaven. Let's look at Romans 6 and 23. It says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. We can't earn our way into heaven. Jesus told his disciples, he said, I lay down my life. And the reason he had to lay down his life was because death had no dominion over him. And the reason death had no dominion over him, because he led a sinless life. Death has dominion over us because we're born in sin. Sin is in us because we were in the loins of Adam. So death has dominion over us because of the sin nature. But Jesus did not have that sin nature. He did not sin in action, in word, or deed, anything. So he had to lay down his life. But here Paul tells us that the wages of sin is death. We can work our way into hell. Wages is something that you get paid for doing something for. So if I live a sinful life, guess what my payment is going to be? My payment will be death. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God. Not something that I can work my way into. Not something that I merit because I'm so good or because I have on a blue suit today and I can get my way into heaven with eternal life. 
No. It is a free gift. It is something that the Father has bestowed upon us because our faith has been placed in his Son. The gift of God is eternal life. Not through my works, not through my words, but the only way to have this gift, to receive this gift, is through Christ Jesus. You know, we can't, can't say it enough. It's all about what Jesus did on Calvary. By what Jesus did on the cross, in what Jesus did on the cross, through what Jesus did on the cross. That's where our eternal life is. But the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. On one hand, we get death. While on the other hand, we can have life. But that life is only found through Jesus. If we li live a sinful life, we deserve and we have earned death. That's our proper payment. Live sinning, die. Except Jesus, live. You know, that just sounds so simple. But not so easy to do. Because if it was easy, the majority of people would be living for God. Versus the scripture said, hell hath enlarged itself. Hell wasn't even created for man. It was created for the devil and his angels. Not at all for mankind. But because we refuse to accept the gift of God, we refuse to accept Jesus, hell will be our destination. And as I mentioned earlier, death is a punishment for sin, though it's not the end. God said in Ecclesiastes 18, Behold, all souls are mine. As the soul of the Father, so also the soul of the Son is mine. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. You know, sometimes when I'm going through the Word, it just amazes me at how simple it is to understand. You really do need somebody to help you misunderstand what God has said. When he said, the soul that sinneth will die, what does that mean? <laughs> the soul that sinneth will die. But as a believer, if we be dead in Christ, we can live again. That's our beginning. Death and life are before all men who hear the gospel. The one, the natural issue and proper reward of sin the other, the absolutely free gift of God to sinners in Jesus Christ. Deuteronomy 30 and 19 says, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death, blessings and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. Death is one of the saddest but profoundest truths of the world. But the gift of God 
God gives to those who turn from sin life eternal. It is his gracious gift conditioned on refusing to be the servant of sin longer, and it's through Christ. I'm going to ask the musicians if they'll come back. When we sometimes look at sin, it sometimes looks appealing. It looks fun. It looks like, oh yeah, I could do this. But there is a cause. There is a, I like to say this to my kids. There are consequences for your actions. If your actions are sin, the consequences is death, judgment, separation from the Father. But if your actions are faith and what Jesus did on the cross, then your consequences are eternal life with him. I want to close with this scripture, Revelation 1, verses 5 and 6. And it says, And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from sin in his own blood and hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. As I said earlier, death is not the end, but it's the beginning of eternal life. And that eternal life is either going to be eternal life in joy, or it's going to be eternal life in sorrow. And I thought about, although I may not have been with God in the beginning God created, as in, in the beginning, or in the beginning as in Alpha, but because of the choice that I have made, accepting the sacrifice that was paid, I can have eternal life in the Omega, in the eternal. Going forward from death, I can have eternal life with Jesus. And that eternal life will be with joy. Let's bow our heads. Father, we just thank you again for allowing us an opportunity to come into your presence. Lord, help us every day to choose the sacrifice that was paid on Calvary. Help us every day, Lord, to think, let me repent of my sins. The ones that I know and the ones that I don't know, Lord. Forgive me, Lord, because I never know when I'm going to draw my last breath. Lord, I want all of my sins to go before me. I don't want anything straggling coming in after me. But you've given me an opportunity, Lord, to come to you, to come boldly to the throne of grace and obtain mercy for whatever sinful action I may have. And Father, I look to you today because you are the writer of my destiny. You are the creator of my destiny. You are the one that has given me a choice of life and death today. And Father, help us to choose life. Help us to choose you. And we give you all the praise and all the glory in your holy name. Amen. Thank you for watching and please subscribe. You can also find more of our videos in our archives at ChristUnveiled.org. We'll see you next time.